Hey guys, it's Julian and today I'm super excited to be talking to you about how to make sink or swim style modern tech house. This is one of the most popular labels right now. They are ch topping the Beatport charts. As usual, you can get the full project files, samples, MIDI, presets, everything that you just heard in the intro, the build up and the drop, literally every single file that you just heard is available right in the top of the description on my bank camp for just $5. This really helps support me. If you guys enjoy these videos, definitely go grab that because it keeps me going so I can keep bringing you more of them. And yeah, let's dive in. All right, so we're at 126 BPM. First sound that we've got going on up here is gonna be the kick. And so this kick is made using my patented layering method where we have a low kick, which you can see all we're doing here is we're just taking EQ3 and taking just the lows. And then we have a mid range and high kick. And then that one we're just taking the mids and highs. You can hear this is more like a 9 or 9 kick as well, so it's very punchy. And it might seem like a simple method for layering kicks. It can definitely be done pretty quickly if you know what you're doing. But there's a little bit of finesse work that I think is really important to get. And if you don't get it, this isn't going to work as well. And the main thing there is dialing in this frequency low knob here. So you'll notice like the default setting is 250. I set this to 269. That's not that much space like between those, but you can see like that means like you really have to sit there and dial that in, like just getting the right. And then obviously you want to make sure that each layer has that at the same setting. But then the other thing that you got to make sure of is the start times. You can see on both of these kicks, I've done just a tiny bit of dragging with this forward. So let me play you the whole kick if we just set this to the default setting. And then with that little change. You can hear even that tiny bit, like that might even be less than a millisecond. But that tiny little bit of space there between the two kicks can make a big difference. So you got to make sure that you just get those start times lined perfectly up for this layering. And I can even just do that one. So yeah. And then on the group there. I just have a high pass filter. That's all it is. And this is just automating in the break. I'll show you the automation. So it's like we're kind of making, you can see, yeah. So it turns on here. And the kick just kind of disappears. And yeah, then we have the bass line. So this is a really simple bass line, it's just three notes. We're in the key of F minor, and it's three of uh, probably the most basic notes in F minor, right? We're using the root note, the minor third. So if we were doing an F minor chord, those are the first two notes right there. So very simple. And then this note right here, which is the minor seventh, which is a fancy way of saying two notes down from the root, right? So like, that's not that hard. Like, yeah, you could say, oh, we're using the root note, and then it's got the minor seventh sliding into the minor third. Really, it's just a lot more simple than that, right? Now, the thing about this one is this groove is kind of sacred. And what I mean by this is once you have, like, these notes, right? Like, most of your bass line leading up to this count right here. What you're going to do is keep those the same and make, like, two halves to it. Like, we see how we have this half and then we have this half. And then each time, these notes are almost the same. You can see it's a little bit different there. But then we're changing the endings. That's what really makes this like a little bit more dynamic. Like you want to keep this, all the dun 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 dun, that. Keep that the same. And then you can, if you want to make a little change each time the bass line repeats, just do it at the end there. So that you still have that really steady groove that people can keep dancing to. Because like if you try to break it up, and then let's say like we change it to maybe like this or something. See, it's going to mess up the groove. You can't keep dancing to it. So, And yeah, and then for the sound, this is made using operator. Now, I happen to know that a lot of people in the style use operator. Like I'm pretty sure John Summit uses operator. I was watching a video the other day where he was using it. And it's a really, really solid bass for these tech house bass lines. And the reason why... Is because you can get kind of like a deeper sine wave. And you can do that with FM8 or like 
name an FM synth for sure. I mean, it's pretty basic stuff that's happening here. But there's just something about Operator being, like, part of Live. And then also, or part of Ableton, I mean to say. And then also just, like, the very quick workflow with it, right? Like, you can make this in literally seconds, you know, if you know what you're doing. And all it is, is it's just three sine waves here. You can usually get away with two. But I added the third one for a little bit more texture. And the key is that the first one is going to be the course pitch at 1. And the second one, the course pitch is going to be at 0.5. And that's going to create this, like, deeper note. So if I put the course pitch back to 1 on the first, or on the second oscillator. See? You have that, like, mid-range to it and that low mid-range. But it's not got the deepness. So that's the secret to that. It's just putting that down an octave. And then we just have a little bit of drum bus. This is not doing too much. It's being blended. Here's without it. And then with it. So you can hear it just kind of fattens this up a little bit and makes it more full. Without messing up the original signal. And then I have this being side chained to the kick. And then finally we have a high pass filter which is just for the break. So yeah, then after that we have this acapella. And the main thing about this one is it's just one riff. It's just this. What I did is I took this. That. And then this. And then I just took. So now it's like, I love that when we touch. So it's kind of taking that vocal and just chopping it up, you know, sort of. Like that classic deep house style vocal. And then it's just that riff. I just made that. And then it's just taking that and kind of chopping it across this whole thing, right? Like over here we have, you know, just some different syllables kind of chopped up to make the build up. So yeah, you can hear that, and then as we get into the drop, it's just take it's just doing that same technique where we're kind of chopping it up and spreading it across time here, but this one's just even more spread out, right? Like this one's really just like just like that, and then letting the echo and reverb blend, and that's really like what you gotta know about these vocals is that it's not just gonna be the hook. You're gonna want the hook, and then it's taking that and kind of chopping it across the track. But also, you don't want too much vocal. Like, we wouldn't want a whole, like, verse, a whole, like, chorus, all that. Just something really catchy like this that's going to be memorable. You know, and then just letting that reverb and delay shine, and even having, like, that, and then letting it shine there. And yeah, so that's just going through a bit of echo and reverb, and then I've got a high pass filter. And yeah, then we have kind of like these effects. So as you can hear, these are all those little background sounds that you hear when the drop comes, right? Like every little kind of thing that just comes in for a second and then disappears. And the way this type of track is going to work is you're going to have your main groove, which is going to be like your you know, kick, and bass, and the drums. And this is really the gist of the track, right? But the thing is, obviously, if we just had this the whole way through, like, let's say you go through the whole build-up, and then you get to the drop, and it's just... Obviously, that works really well, and it's very powerful, but obviously this... with all these little dynamic sounds, is a lot more impactful than that. So that's what this sits in the mix to do. It's essentially just like sounds that are going to constantly be happening. Like there's only a few moments that you really get like a breath from these. And basically they're just keeping that groove going and keeping it alive. 
And the way that I'm making these is through a few different methods, like this first one here is just this wavetable pad. Which, if you notice, this is actually only two notes. It's just F and G sharp, which are both notes that we used in the bass line there. And this is just like two saw waves, an octave apart, a bunch of unison, some reverb, a little bit of amp blended in there. This right here is just like a brass stab with a short reverb on it that I added. I've also got like this old school kind of like 90s techno style stab with some reverb. There's this wavetable patch. Which you hear in the build up as well. And so this is just playing one note. It's just F. And then you can see the sound on this one is two saw waves here. Which are in the same octave. And then you'll notice actually automated. The detune on that second one there. We've got a low pass filter which has a little bit of an envelope on it. And then some unison. And then this just has that amp blended in. A bit of echo which is being automated to make it kind of disappear as we go up there. A bit of reverb automation. And then finally this frequency shifter. That's what does that like pitch thing. And it's kind of cool too. Like making a build up out of the elements that you have. Like rather than going and like adding a big riser to this. Why not just turn this into a riser right. So that's kind of the idea there. Got some drum buzz. High pass filter. And then just being side chained to the kick. And then the other little effects here is just this clap. With a bunch of echo on it. And then this wavetable. And that's just playing F. It's just, it's actually in the exact same patch. Everything is the same as that first synth I showed you. But I changed this one to two square waves and they're at the same octave. And then also it's using the noise unison. But yeah, so you can see like all of these sounds are pretty easy to make. You just gotta make sure that you have enough of them. Like typically like five, six, seven, anywhere between five and ten of these I think is like the perfect amount. And again, like it's a big beginner mistake to just not have these and then just think like, like this alone isn't really it. That feels like the intro. You need these things to really make it like that big full drop and yeah so then we have the percussion and the way I've got the percussion separated here is we have kind of like our mains right like everything that you hear right up front we have like an open hi-hat which has my stereo widening rack on it as well so that's kind of spread out and then we have this one which is just like a tsh -tsh -tsh, sitting really nicely in there underneath it then we have this clap with like a really short reverb on it. And also a ride sim, which has my ultimate ride rack, which I explained a few days ago. So that video should be in the recommended. But yeah, so I like to keep these kind of like on their own. Right, like the main, like right up in your face drums, you could kind of keep on your own. And then we have the groups down here for the more background stuff. So that starts with these hi hats. So what it is, is it's two shakers. We have like this one, which is just one of my loops. One of my sample packs. And then we have this organic shaker loop as well. Kind of underneath that you can hear. But then we also have these two programmed hi-hats. And if I play those with the main hi-hat. You can hear those are creating this nice little intricate groove as well. So then we have these four hi-hat layers coming together like this. And it makes like a very nice kind of groove in the background of the track. And then I just have a little bit of a high-end boost on that. And then for the percussion. That's the same deal. Like we just have like this little groove happening. This bell which is call and response with the percussion underneath it. Yeah, you can hear that. And then we have this little bongo. Yeah. 
And then we don't have anything on the group there, but I still like grouping these because it allows you to turn them all up and down as one, right? Like this way, we can work with this very easily. We can say, okay, I need to turn down the percussion. I can just turn down this one group rather than going and having to go one by one and turn each of these individual things down. So yeah, and then that's all the main stuff, right? Like all the percussion, all the drums, the bass, the leads, the vocal. Now all we have down here left is just the little effects. And these are just really in here to kind of carry the track along, right? These are just what's kind of like grabbing it and kind of pulling you into that next part. <laughs> But you'll notice when I play these, they're very impactful, right? And they take up a lot of the mix, especially in this buildup, right? With like this big snare, which all this is, is just a snare. Got a little bit of a volume automation on it, so it's like that. Got some reverb on it. It's playing 16th notes, and that reverb automates up. And then we also have this frequency shift of just pitching that up. We have like this little fill snare. Which just has a bit of automation there and some reverb automation. I have this little reverse crash. And we've got like a nice like And other than that, it's just like a little like that one right there. And then this reverse building up. So yeah, these effects, although they might seem simple, it might seem like a background element, still going to be really important. It's just like all those little sounds I was talking about up here where it's like, you really just got to make sure like you have this stuff because if you don't like, this is a large part of this build up. Like if I turn it off, you know, this doesn't really transfer as well. Compared to... also not overdoing it. I think it can be tempting sometimes to have like, you know, two risers like or like maybe like a build snare and a clap doing something like you don't actually need that much of this stuff. It's just the elements that you do need, you got to have them at the right level and turn them up so that they're really impactful in the mix. And yeah. So yeah, that's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get this full project file, samples, MIDI, presets, literally every single thing that you heard in this video is available right at the top of the description on my fan camp for just $5. Once again, this really helps support me. If you guys enjoy these videos, I don't make a whole lot just off of the YouTube ads and that alone. But with the sample packs and different things like this, I can keep going and keep bringing you guys awesome new content every single day. So yeah, thank you so much for the support, guys. Every little bit helps. I really appreciate it. And I will see you tomorrow with another video.